Baptism is My Soul, There is a Country by Parry. evening, Psalms 27 to 29.
book of Proverbs, chapter 24, beginning at verse 19. Fret not yourself because of evildoers, and be not envious of the wicked, for the evil man has no future, the lamp of the wicked will be put out. My son, fear the Lord and the King, and do not disobey either of them, for disaster from them will rise suddenly, and who knows the ruin that will come from them both. These also are sayings of the wise. Partiality in judging is not good. He who says to the wicked, you are innocent, will be cursed by peoples, abhorred by nations. But those who rebuke the wicked will have delight, and a good blessing will be upon them. He who gives a right answer kisses the lips. Prepare your work outside, get everything ready for you in the field, and after that, build your house. Be not a witness against your neighbour without cause, and do not deceive with your lips. Do not say, I will do to him as he has done to me. I will pay the man back for what he has done. I passed by the field of a sluggard, by the vineyard of a man without sense, and lo, it was all overgrown with thorns, the ground was covered with nettles, and its stone wall was broken down. Then I saw and considered it. I looked and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber, and want like an armed man. Here ends the first lesson.
The second letter to the Corinthians, the third chapter. St. Paul describes the glory of the new covenant by which we are to be transfigured into the likeness of Christ. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our letters of recommendation, written on your hearts, to be known and read by all men. And you show that you are a letter from Christ delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to claim anything as coming from us. Our sufficiency is from God, who has qualified us to be ministers of a new covenant, not in a written code, but in the Spirit. For the written code kills, but the Spirit gives life. Now, if the dispensation of death carved in letters on stone came with such splendor that the Israelites could not look at Moses' face because of its brightness, fading as this was, why should not the dispensation of the Spirit be attended with greater splendor? For if there was splendor in the dispensation of condemnation, the dispensation of righteousness must far exceed it in splendor. Indeed, in this case, what once had splendor has come to have no splendor at all because of the splendor that surpasses it. For if what faded away came with splendor, what is permanent must have much more splendor. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not see the end of the fading splendor. But their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, that same veil remains unlifted, because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when a man turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being changed into his likeness from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Here ends the second lesson.
was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Let us pray. Today, the Anglican Church throughout the world prays for the Diocese of Kampala and the Diocese of Mardi and the West Nile. We pray for all Christians in Uganda. And here, in our own Diocese of Southern, we pray for the parish of Hoveringham, for the parish priest Bernard Hill, canon of this cathedral church, and his people. Remember in thy mercy, O Lord our God, thy holy church throughout the world. Heal its divisions, restore its unity, quicken its life, empower its witness, that so it may become the instrument of thy purpose for the reconciliation of mankind and the healing of the nations. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray particularly today for all engaged in the service of broadcasting and communication. We thank the Almighty God, Lord of the universe, that thou hast revealed in our time new means of communication among men. Grant that all such means may be used in the service of truth peace and love, so that everywhere men may do thy will and find brotherhood in thee, through Christ Jesus our Saviour. Amen. And we pray for the increase of joy among Christians in the world today. O Heavenly Father, who hast filled the world with beauty, Open our eyes, we beseech thee, to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, we may learn to serve thee with gladness, for the sake of him by whom all things were made, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O thou who art the Son of righteousness, the eternal source of light and life, Shine upon us, we beseech thee, with the beams of thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad in thee all the days of our life. For the praise and glory of thy holy name, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Finally, wherever you are listening to this service, will you join with us in praying for one another as we say the grace together? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.
choral evensong came from Southallminster. The rector Corey was Kenneth Beard and the assistant organist Peter Wood. Next Wednesday at 10 to 4, choral evensong will come from Canterbury Cathedral.